All right, so in this video, we are gonna start to get into the coordinate plane. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is just go through and review the kind of names for all the different things on the coordinate plane. Um, and then also, you know, positives and negatives based on which direction we're going um, for each one of the, the axes there. Um, so the first direction we get in our notes page here is to label the coordinate grid below using this little word bank. And I put word slash symbol bank because I do have the plus and the minus. So first, let's label the x-axis and the y-axis. So you can see we have the, the lines going through. You know, there's a lot of lines going through, but there's two lines. There's one that's um, vertical, going up and down, and one that's horizontal, going right and left, and those are darker, and they also have the numbers on them. Um, they don't always have the numbers on them. It kind of depends on where you're looking at the coordinate plane, but a lot of the time they do have the numbers. Um, and so we can see that this one is pointing at the one that's going vertical, and this is our Y axis. So Y is always going up and down, and it's right through the middle of the graph here. Sometimes we'll only see like this section of the graph. So um, we always still identify the Y axis as the line that's going up and down, and it's gonna be bolded in some way. So we'll know that that's the axis. Um, all right, and then we also have this vertical line so we have this one pointing at it, and we also have this one pointing at it. This one's pointing at a very specific spot on the x-axis, and it's also on the y-axis. So it's kind of both. I couldn't choose, is this either x or y? Because x-axis is going from right to left here. It's the, the horizontal line, and the y-axis is that vertical one going up and down. And this is kind of going through both points, right? Or both lines. So I wouldn't really call it one or the other, but we call this middle point here is the origin. It's kind of like our, I don't necessarily want to say starting point, but it is where we start when we're doing coordinates, when we start to um, actually graph them. That's always where we begin. Um, all right, and so now that we know we have the x-axis and the y-axis, and we have our origin, and we would begin, if we want to start plotting points, we want to use what's called an order pair, and we'll talk a little bit more about that down here in this sentence. Um, but we have x coordinates and we have y coordinates in a ordered pair. And so I have to know, am I moving to the, the right or the left? So if I'm moving to the right, the number is going to be positive. If I'm moving to the left, the number is going to be negative. And then for up or down, same idea, my y coordinate will either be positive for up or negative for down. Okay. And then these last boxes are just how we name the quadrants. So we start over here, this is quadrant one. And then instead of going um, clockwise, we go counterclockwise, we go back backwards, and this would be quadrant, quadrant two. This one is quadrant, quadrant three. And they're Roman numerals, if you haven't seen that yet. Um, just one I means one, two I's means two, three I's means three. And you're not gonna do four I's for this one, you're actually going to do um, an I and a V. This means four because V means five. So this is one before five, which is four. Um, all right, so this is our coordinate plane and kind of all the essential pieces there. So down here I have a coordinate grid is basically a map. So that's a very easy way of thinking of it. Um, and you can think of an order pair as directions. So we start at the origin, which is that kind of middle section here. We haven't gone anywhere. So this is this is zero, zero, right? We haven't gone right, left, up, or down. So I'm right in the middle, I'm at zero. And then we're gonna move right or left using the X coordinate. And then we move up or down using the Y coordinate. And the order always goes X then Y like this. And this is why we call it an ordered pair because it's in a specific order. So we always put them in order. First, are we going right or left? Then are we going up or down? And it's literally direction. Imagine yourself standing kind of in a spot like this and saying you can't move diagonally, but you wanna get say from here to here. Well, you'd have to tell the you'd have to get directions on that and say, well, how many spaces do I have to move to the right to do that? I have to move five spaces, and then I have to move up two more spaces to get to this point. 
So this one would have a coordinate of five because I moved five units to the right, and then two because I moved two units up. So it's definitely think of it kind of like a little map, and this is your direction. Where am I going? How do I get there? Do I go right? Do I go left? Do I go up? Do I go down? Okay. Um, so I'm going to take these off because these aren't really part of the notes page. It was just an example there. Um, all right, and we're going to look at the problem right below that. So we're going to plot a couple points here. So using the pencil, plot the point 6, negative 1. And they're saying using the pencil on there because there's a little pencil tool on Alex. And you'll see that off to the side here. I just didn't take a picture of it. But it literally looks like a little pencil when you click on it. Because um, if you just have your mouse and it actually will look something like this with little crosshairs, um, it won't let you put the point on. You need to have the pencil to actually put the point. So start at the origin, which is that zero, zero mark. I haven't gone anywhere, which is the middle, right? I even put the middle there. And then we're going to move six units to the, well, it's positive, so I'm going to go to the right. And from there, I'm going to go one unit. Since it's negative, I'm going to go one unit down. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one down. And there we go. We plotted that point. All right, next one. So four and negative two. So again, I'm going to go back to the center on this one. We go back to my middle and I'm going to go four units to the right because it's positive again. So that's right. And then I'm going to go two units down because it's negative two. Okay. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, and plot my point. So make sure you don't plot a point here and here. You only plot one. It's kind of a final direction. You started here and you want to get here because the directions, that's how we get to that one point. So we're not really stopping. We're like if we were walking or something, however you imagine yourself going on this one, um, or maybe riding a bike if you were one of my sons. So um, they, you know, you ride here and then you turn and you keep going. So we're not stopping at that one point. Um, all right, let's look at one more piece here. So when we are looking at a coordinate plane, they always look like this, which is X, Y. Um, a, uh, let me see, what word do we want to fill in there? Relation, I forgot what word was. Fill in the blank there for a second. I drew a blank, ha ha ha. Um, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. So we have two pieces on ordered pairs. We have a domain. So the domain of a relation is the set of all first elements in the ordered pairs, which we can just look at the x coordinates. That's what first elements mean. So first means that number that's first in an ordered pair. The range of a relation is the set of all second elements in an ordered pair, which is the y-coordinates. So it's just all those second numbers in the each ordered pair. So all we're going to do is look at the ordered pairs they give us and identify the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates, and we're just going to list them with commas. So here's the first one for this coordinate, which is negative 5, 2. It's the first one for this coordinate of 8, 3, 8, negative 1, and 0, negative 5. So one thing about this, you don't have to list anything that's repeated, and they also do not have to be in order from least to greatest. That is not a requirement, but they do have to be in set notation. So set notation means that you have this little fancy bracket on there, and there's just going to be a button that you push on Alex to do that. So I'm not very good at drawing little fancy brackets, something like that. Okay, kind of looks like a little face. Um, so this is how you put it into set notation. You just um, use these brackets, and again, there's just a little button off to the side. You're going to click it, and you type your list in that um, set. So I have negative 5, 8, 8, and 0. So negative 5, I don't have to put 8 and 8. I've already put 8 once and 0. I do, do not have to list duplicates. In fact, Alex will kind of ding you on that one. It'll tell you, oh, hold on. You don't need duplicates in there. Um, all right, so for range, and here I'll change my color here. We're just going to look at the y's for each one. So here's 2, 3, negative 1, negative 5. So there are no duplicates there. I do have to list all four. Two. So I have two, three, negative one, and negative five. Um, and one reason we would look at domain and range is um, when we're looking at those things, we can see kind of if there's any limits um, to any kind of um, linear equation or relationship that we're looking at. 
So domain range can give us some very quick information on how far apart the numbers are or you know the actual range of them. I know I'm using range kind of in a different way there like I'm uh, kind of thinking of um, from least to greatest on the numbers how far apart they are is more how I'm using range in that second um, definition there. All right, so this is how we plot a point in the coordinate plane and how we look at domain and range um, from ordered pairs. So go ahead and go on Alex and give it a try.